Hello, beloved, and welcome to our weekly Bible study. And in our weekly Bible study on the Holy Spirit, we are still busy with uh, the Holy Spirit or the work of the Holy Spirit in revelation and inspiration. Now, this is the second part on this uh, topic on the revelation and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, in part one, we basically learned that there are certain things which only God can do. And the Bible tells us of many things which cannot be done by any man now, or by any other power or whatever. Uh, they, they can only be done by God and God alone. Now, two of these things uh, we mentioned was revelation and inspiration. And last time we basically uh, had a, kind of an introduction to the Holy Spirit's work in Revelation and Inspiration. And what we're going to do in this uh, study or Bible study, we're going to look at the Holy Spirit's work in Revelation. Before we continue, though, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can look at your word, study your word, and see how you inspired the writers of the Bible, but also find your revelation in your word. And Father, thank you that we can believe that your word is an inerrant and that your word is all we need to, um, how can I say, because it's all sufficient, but it's all we need to live the kind of lives that are pleasing to you. So we pray, Father, as we do the study, that you will please open up our hearts and our minds to understand, to receive, enable me as your servant to teach your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if we look at this topic of the Holy Spirit's work in Revelation, uh, we can see that the Holy Spirit basically is the author of God's revelation. Uh, whenever we want to learn about God, we go to the Bible. I mean, that's, that's basically what Christians do. That's what we as believers do. Because the Bible was written uh, so that we can have God's revelation, eh? so that we can learn about God, so that we can learn about what God wants, and we can learn about what God has done for us, and we can learn about what God has done in history. All right. Now, the, we know the Bible was written by men. And um, so some people come kind of make the mistake of thinking that is from these men that we learn from God. And that's not so. See, the writers of the Bible tells us that their writings did not come from themselves, it basically came from the Holy Spirit. If we take, for example, Acts chapter 1, verse 16, it says, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. And this is Peter speaking, you remember in the upper room, when they were uh, going to choose Ma Matthias, as the yeah, uh, 12th apostle. and But it's interesting what he says. He says, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David. All right. So uh, it's the Holy Spirit, Peter says, that spoke. But how did he speak? He speak um, by the mouth of David. Okay. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21 says, for prophecy which means uh, that which God says, nah? Th that which God um, has proclaimed, that which God has revealed, that which God has said. Prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You see that? So it speaks about, or it speaks very clearly that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay. And they were holy men of God who spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In Micah chapter 3, verse 8, we read, But uh, truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to J Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. See what Micah says? Remember Micah, a minor prophet? But what he says is, he says, I am full of power. Power? From where? By the Spirit of the Lord. And he, I'm full of justice and might to do what? To declare the transgressions of Jacob and the sins of Israel. 
All right. So it's clear that the writers of the Bible and the, the, those who spoke on behalf of God, yeah, the prophets, that they understood where their power came from, where their, their words came from to, to basically speak forth. Now, these verses basically shows us that when God revealed himself, it was the Holy Spirit who did the work. It was the Holy Spirit who enabled those men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, or who were inspired. It was the Holy Spirit who enabled them to basically understand who God is and to reveal that to, to us as people. And, and this, is, this is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now, the second thing that we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit uses different methods to reveal God. Okay, the Holy Spirit uses different methods to reveal God. The Holy Spirit basically reveals God to man. Uh, and we can say in, through his spoken words. Genesis 18 verse 13 says, And the Lord said to Abraham, This is God speaking, eh? Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child, since I am old? See, this is the Lord speaking. God spoke to the people of the Old Testament. In Exodus 19, verse 9, we read, And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. So, clearly, the Holy Spirit basically revealed God to to the readers of the Bible, through his spoken words, which was basically written down at the end of the day so that we can know what God said to, um, to, to his servants. But the Holy Spirit also revealed God to us through dreams in the Old Testament. Né? For example, in Genesis chapter 20, verse 3, we read, But God came to Abimelech, and he came in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, and she is a man's wife. And this is the warning to Abimelech, the king, that he uh, should let go of Sarah because Sarah was Abraham's wife. So it came through a dream. Eh? That's how God revealed himself uh, to us, or the Holy Spirit basically revealed God to us, and it was through dreams because it was the Holy Spirit who gave him that dream. Genesis 31 verse 11 and 12 says, Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. Once again, God speaking to Jacob about the issue with Laban because of um, the fact that he basically used him as a slave for so long and didn't give him the wife that he was working for, basically. All right, so basically what we see is that uh, the Holy Spirit revealed God to us through, his, to God's, through God's spoken words, but also the Holy Spirit reveals God or revealed God to us through dreams. Now that is written down, that all was written down for us, uh, in the Old Testament, so that we can basically see them. But it also, we see them in the New Testament as well. For example, the Holy Spirit revealed God to us through visions. And you remember the book of Revelation? It is basically the visions that John saw and he wrote it down. Because it was told to him that he had to write down what he saw. But in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 we read, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abraham uh, in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Okay. Then in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, we read, In the year of King Uzziah, or that the King Uzziah died, uh, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. This is a vision that Isaiah saw of God. Now, once again, it's a revelation. How did that revelation come to Isaiah? Through a vision. All right. How did, uh, how can I say, Abraham, how did he hear the word of the Lord? 
It came through a vision. In Ezekiel Ezekiel 1 verse 1 we read, Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, uh, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Shebar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. So, clearly the Holy Spirit revealed God to Ezekiel through visions. But then, we can also say that the Holy Spirit revealed God to us through, uh, they call it theophanies, I think that's how you pronounce it, which means appearances of God. In, in Josiah uh, chapter 5, verse 13, for example, we read, and further on, and it came to pass that Jos, uh, Jos, Joshua, sorry, not Josiah, but Joshua uh, was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him, Uh, with his sword drawn in his hand. And uh, Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off, Um, your foot for the place where you stand is holy and Joshua did so it's interesting remember whenever an angel appeared to someone uh, it was the angel that said to the person if the person fell down in worship or fell down in adoration or whatever the angel would always say no no no, stand up I'm a fellow servant We, we read that for example in the book of Revelation but you're the commander of the Lord's army says no, because the chances are this is the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is Jesus Christ. All right, and that's why he received worship from Joshua. And he spoke to Joshua, but he appeared to Joshua. In Judges chapter 6, from, uh, from verse 22, we read, for example, about Gideon. It says, now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of, uh, that he was the angel of the Lord that appeared to him now the angel of the lord remember in the old testament jesus christ is the angel of the lord in the old testament so gideon said alas o lord god for i have seen the angel of the lord face to face then the lord said to him peace be with you do not fear you shall not die all right amazing because the holy spirit here revealed to us uh, through uh, theophanies and, and it is these Appearances of God that he wrote, the Holy Spirit inspired the writers of the Bible to write down so that we can know uh, of these appearances of the Lord uh, uh, to to people uh, in uh, biblical times, uh, through history. But the Holy Spirit also revealed God to us through written words. In, In John chapter 14, verse 26, this is a reminder that the Holy Spirit would come and he would basically remind the disciples of certain things. How would he do it? We know he would do it through the Bible now, at the end of the day. But uh, John 14, 26 says to us, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. And the way that he brought or brings things into remembrance is through the written word. We have the, the Bible. And we are reminded, and even the disciples, um, when it was written down, they could have the manuscripts and basically be reminded of the things that Jesus Christ said. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, our very well-known verse that we quote a lot in the, in the church is, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof for correction, instruction and in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the, the, the Bible is inspired by God and it is profitable for you know, doctrine, reproof and all these things. Uh, at the end of the day, it is the written word of God. Okay, But then we have another one, and that is that the Holy Spirit revealed God to us through Christ, through Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1, for example, says, verse 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. 
All right, so God spoke to the, through the prophets in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he speaks through his word. He speaks through Christ, who is revealed to us by John as the word of God. In John 1 verse 18, we read, No one has seen God but at any time. The only begotten Son, that's the one of a kind, never to be repeated again. That's what it means to be the begotten Son. It's not uh, the first one to be born. It is the unique one to be born because he was born of a virgin. Uh, he says, The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Jesus made God known to us. Uh, and then John 14 verse 9 says, and this is Jesus said to him, uh, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? And he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? You see, the Holy Spirit basically revealed God to us through Jesus Christ. If we see Jesus, we see the Father. We, Jesus was God's revelation uh, um, on this earth but the spirit also revealed God through his written word ne? through written words basically the Holy Spirit also revealed God to us through theophanies these appearances of God but he also revealed God to us through visions and dreams and through spoken words these are all different methods that um, the Holy Spirit used to reveal God to us but it was all directed and guided by the Holy Spirit it wasn't just left to chance. It was, was done so that at the end of the day, we can have a, a, a clear, excellent, uh, inerrant, perfect revelation of God as God decided to reveal himself to us so that we can uh, basically believe what he says, accept what he says, and learn more about him as we understand what he says in his word as the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. All right. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. The Holy Spirit who basically reveals God to us. Let's close our eyes as we close this um, Bible study. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is the one who revealed you to us so that we can understand something about who he is. Uh, well, who you are, sorry, and who the Holy Spirit is and how the Trinity works and, and everything about you that you wanted to reveal to us. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals these things to us, that we have your revelation. And thank you so much, Father, that we can have your revelation, read your revelation, understand your revelation because of the Spirit who inspired it, but also who enables us to understand it. So I pray, Father, please, um, enable us not just to believe it, but to receive it and to make it our own uh, this we pray in jesus name beloved thank you very much for listening may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you may he give you his peace god willing until next time when we look at part three uh, as we continue to study uh, the holy spirit god willing until next time bye bye